lives here, living here or being based here with an air crew or people who work on the ground. The Almighty God preserves their going out and their coming in. And now, at a historic moment, I declare the Auckland International Airport open. January the 29th, 1966, and 98,000 people swarmed to Mangere for the opening of Auckland's new 10 million pound international airport. 16 years of planning, 5 years of physical work, and now the big day. aircraft worth 60 million pounds are on display and many are being seen for the first time in New Zealand. One of the strangest visitors puts in an early appearance driven by a propeller and floating on a cushion of air, the curious Westland hovercraft. Already a familiar sight in Auckland skies, a DC-8 leads off. 57 tons of United States Air Force Starlifter. The P-3 Orion, the maritime reconnaissance aircraft that's to replace our Sunderland. Boy, wait for me, fellas. wing area equivalent to four medium-sized houses, a menacing flying stingray, the RAF Falcon. Supersonic Mirages, pride of the Royal Australian Air Force. for everybody. Will it take off? 33 men earthbound. But hold it. Somebody's main parachute has failed to open and he plummets down for two and a half thousand feet, almost strangled by the lines of his emergency parachute. crashes into the water, but he's extremely lucky and suffers only minor injuries. Long a familiar sight in the Pacific, the stately Sunderland will soon bow out to the long-range Orion. Two more maritime reconnaissance aircraft, an Australian Neptune and an RAF Shackleton. The C-141 Starlifter. This mighty troop carrier can cruise at over 500 miles an hour for 4,000 miles, non-stop with a load of 30 tons. A cruising speed of 525 miles an hour with 80 passengers, the sleek, graceful Comet 4C. An aircraft that could possibly become a familiar sight in New Zealand skies, the controversial BAC-111. Powered flight to free fall. From a height of two miles, four men of the RAF Far East parachute team hurtle down to 2,000 feet before pulling the ripcord. A flare far below is their target.
Tundra bombers, the frontline aircraft of the RNZAF. These twin-engine jets have done remarkable service in both New Zealand and Malaysia, and are soon to be replaced. A beast with deadly grace. The Vulcan can reach almost the speed of sound. The oldest military aircraft at the pageant, veterans of countless air shows, the RNZAF Harvards from Wigram weave one of the most exciting displays. but always new for the spectator, a United States Air Force strata tanker glides over and refuels one Phantom fighter bomber while the other flies escort. Now the two Phantoms turn on a starring performance less than 100 feet above the runway. The lead Phantom idles along at only 130 miles an hour. The second thunders past at over 700. These Phantom F-4Cs can exceed 1,600 miles an hour, twice the speed of sound, and have been mentioned as possible replacements for the RNZAF's Canberras. At over 700 miles an hour, pressure waves begin to form and cause a glowing shimmer around the fuselage. Then it's the silver wasps with the fatal sting, the supersonic mirages of the Royal Australian Air Force. These too have been mentioned as Canberra replacements. Burning fuel at the rate of 50 gallons a minute, rolls are performed at up to 700 miles an hour. is at home on land and sea, but aerobatics are beyond its capabilities. How frustrating. Last of the crowd pleasers, four vampires from the RNZAS number 75 squadron rolling and looping only 15 feet apart. Finding the world tighter. Now Auckland's new 10 million pound international airport has woven New Zealand into the pattern. Flying is definitely the way to travel.